part four, the last tip to captivate your audience. Here we go. Let's see what this one is. Ooh. Number Good three. Stock footage. Good stock footage. Oh, it's the same dude? Audacity, audacity. Audacity. Audacity informs and inspires. You have to be bold in order to give a speech that's going to last. So, so I just, honestly, I'm going to watch it and stuff, but at this point, I think you're, I'm, I'm sounding like a broken record. This is great motivational speaking that you watch like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. That has so little to do with your day to day, with your meetings, with your training sessions, with your certification courses, with your regional updates, that it's just an idea and it sounds really pretty, but it will never change behavior. And I hope, I know that sounds harsh, but it's kind of true. How many times have you had to sit through this kind of shit? Sorry, this kind of stuff. And you're like, that was so powerful. That was great. And nothing happened afterward. You didn't change. How many of you guys experience fear when you speak? Fear of an opinion of other, fear of being criticized, fear of not being good enough, fear of tripping up on a word, fear of what you look like. We know that fear drives most of us. And I'm here to tell you that audacity is what you need. Boldness. No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, because if I tried to do something really audacious and I work for a kind of a conservative company or maybe I'm new, I could get myself in trouble. This concept of audacity, sure, sometimes in certain situations, you may be correct, sir. You are correct. But to say that, especially when you don't even know your audience or what type of presentations they do, because they're all listening to you like, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't work for me. That's a great idea. I, I mean, it, we can't do that. That's all what they're all thinking. That's so true. He's so right. I mean, I could never do that, but like, he's so right. Actually, what you need is to always practice with fear because you will always be nervous and scared. So there's no such thing as overcoming nervousness and being scared. What there is, is calluses. You guys have calluses? Look at those calluses. Doing my chin-ups, yeah. They used to be more hardcore. What there is, is calluses. And what I mean by that is this. No matter, you're always gonna be nervous and scared when you're presenting. I'm always nervous and scared. I've been doing it for years, but, but. I only practice being nervous. So I feel the nervousness and then I practice my presentation. So here's a really good way that you can do it. And it's very simple, but I'm telling you, dude, you will not be able to do it. You'll be too scared. But here's what you do. Practice your presentation outside where people can see you. And you gotta do it out loud. You can't be like in your head. You have to actually like, here's my presentation that I'm doing. Someone's gonna walk by you. Be like, because that replicates the feelings you are gonna have when you actually present. But if you do that often enough, you build the calluses and boom, it will not affect your delivery because you'll be used to that feeling. This is what you need. If you wanna deliver something and absolutely be transformative, I'm, I'm passionate about this. That begs the question that that's the point of your goalie repent is to transform people. I believe this because I live this. I'm telling you, you have to be bold. You can't half step into your presentation. You have to be bold. You cannot half step into your presentation. And one of the ways in which we do that is we deliver a story. Story includes power. I, in video one, did I talk about he was gonna be like a story and then, but he's not gonna tell you how to actually do a story? Stories are powerful. They're the most powerful thing that you can do when you open your mouth. Yeah, for sure I did this. Watch video one, no, video two, like part two when this guy first started talking and I said like, just by the look of this guy, he's gonna say some stuff like, you gotta say stories to, that are powerful because that's what people, tell them your personal stories, right? Tell them your personal stories when you are pitching a new mutual fund to other mutual fund advisors because the brain operates in pictures and a story has the ability to paint the picture in the mind of another individual. That is true. That is a very good point. Yes, that is very true. 
you do think in pictures and a story puts a picture in your mind if you do it the right way. And I will give you a tactic for that at the end of this video because I want to see if he tells you how to do it. They did a study about TED Talks and the top TED Talks, I'm talking the million, the million hits, the top TED Talks, 85% of them were story centric. But when are we doing TED Talks? Stories can be crossed over to any industry at any time. Give me any example. I bet you he's just gonna move on. Whether you're telling your personal story, whether it's uh, Martin Luther King delivering a speech. Listen, if, any, if anyone is giving you this shit, sorry, if anyone is always, is, if the only examples people can come up with, I think I, there was another person I was, come on, come up with like actual practical examples or examples from that are not just, Everybody, it's like Steve Jobs, Martin Luther King, Obama. Steve Jobs, Martin Luther King, Obama. That's everybody, everybody. Give me, when are we doing those kinds of talks? I'm totally triggered right now. It's a president of a country. A story is the thing that has time sit and lets you go like this. Huh. Story is powerful, right? Never tell a story without making a point, but never make a point without telling a story. Like, That's a cute little little term. How? Use the story to drive How? home what you're How? trying to do. Because, homie, listen, yo, everybody tries to do this. Everybody knows that. And they're like, as opposed to what? How do I do a story? Because when I try, it fails. Or how am I supposed to do a story if I work for like an insurance company and I have this new insurance instrument that I want other insurance providers, because I'm a wholesaler, to tell to their clients, how? Am I gonna tell them a story about how I overcame adversity? And that's why I believe this 2.3% real estate insurance premium on top of your life insurance is a great way for you to get a guaranteed 3%. Like, like do you know what I'm saying? This is good if it's generic motivational speaking, but it doesn't apply broken record day to day. It crosses every industry, every anything that you want to do, a story will get you there. So motivation to study, maybe you, he does do this. Maybe the guy in here does do this, right? But I got a feeling he just talked a lot more and then got everyone to like tell him about a time that they cried. Like, unless you cry, right? Like, it's, it's not important. It's like, unless you have six pack, you're not in shape. <laughs> uh, here's how you get people to put a picture in their head. Two, stra two, two tactics right now. Number one, you literally just tell them to imagine something. So I could tell you about the time that I used to work in a resort in uh, the Dominican Republic, and it was on the northern part. And, you know, when, it, when you look at it, it's it's like it was a curved beach and the sand was like really white, um, but it had like, you know, the water was really shallow and really calm. So it was very see-through and you're not listening to me. You're not listening. You Notice you're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, waiting for the actual point to get there. Or I can just say, imagine the perfect beach. That's where I used to work. You use imagine statements. So let's go back to that insurance thing. Um, imagine a, guaran a guaranteed 3% return, 100% guarantee. Imagine being able to say that to your client. Done. That's how you put a picture in their head. Easy. The other way you put a picture in their head, you use this question. What would you do? So you have a client that is afraid to invest with you. They want you to grow their money, but they don't want to give you any money and they don't want to do anything except use a savings account. What would you do in that situation? What could you do? And again, go back to that first rule that Simon said, I called him out on it because he didn't, it was just platitudes. Get them to do something, get them to think about something. And you do that with that rhetorical question. What would you do in that situation? What would you do? So thank you very much for joining us on this other four-part journey, four tips to improve your public speaking. Sorry, motivation to study. 
uh, I don't mean to call you out. I've watched a bunch of your videos and it's, you are like, a le you are like very self-helpy, very motivational speaker kind of orientated. And that's fine if that's what people want, but don't give me these tips to improve my public speaking unless I'm going to be, you should call this four tips to improve your motivational speaking. If you want to be a motivational speaker, because that's what really what this was. And if that's what it was called, I would have watched these guys and be like, yeah, this is good motivational speaking because they were both Simon Sinek and then this other gentleman were great. But alas, ideas without tactics are useless. And that's the positive note I will leave you on, leave you on dear viewer. Thank you for watching. Team hashtag and boring, baby. All right. See you next time.